So she just walked over to the trees, and uh, there was just a ring of trees there. I mean, not, not special, it wasn't, mm. a, you know, it hadn't been planted deliberately, just an old trees. And she uh, apparently just went in there and said, you know, I, I tell him I need some washing powder. Anyway, he comes back with washing powder. And, um, and I said to him, so hang on a second, washing powder wasn't on your list. And he said, no, no, but I just knew that she wanted it. Now, you know, he didn't say, the trees told me. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, he knew, yeah. but, you know, and this woman knew from history or what had been passed down yeah. by her mother and grandmother that this was an alternative yeah. means of getting in touch with people who had the ability to receive it. But she, she was, she obviously grew up and there was none of this, oh, don't be silly and you can't do that and you can't do Absolutely. this. Absolutely. So they just took it as a natural thing that they had the ability and they used the ability. Well, yeah, we know as well. I mean, there have been many examples where, um, you know, if you don't tell a child that uh, if they lose a leg, you know, it's never going to grow back because yeah. there's been cases where young kids... Mm. I mean, there was one young boy who had a fascination with salamander. I remember this some years ago when I was researching this. And he was fascinated that if a salamander lost a leg, mm. or had a leg pulled off, yeah. then it would grow another one. Anyway, incredibly, uh, the kid was involved in an accident and had his leg amputated below the knee. And um, because he was familiar with the salamander, he actually started to grow a lower limb. It never developed into a full yeah. leg and foot. But nonetheless, exactly. the process had been activated. So, you know, we have so much potential. Mm. And I don't know how much of that well, we're going to realise, but... Yeah, it's been taken out. It's yes. been taken away. Purposely, the knowledge has been taken away. Absolutely. To stop us from being who we should be. Yes. Um, just one more question for you. It's one for, for Steve here, who's on the camera at the moment. Um, Steve says, if you default on the loans, and Portugal and Spain do so too, do you think they have prepared for this? Um, do they have a plan? I mean, are they, are they looking at Ireland saying, look, if them Irish people default on the loan, you know, look, we can't have a backup plan. Well, you know what, well, I think that, they, of course they have a plan. And I think, I mean, let's, let's put it this way. They can easily afford, easily afford, the countries not to pay back the loans. Yeah. I mean, these guys have more money than they know what to do with. Mm. So there is no risk of um, yeah. you know, these guys being in poverty just because... Uh, it's not fee, it's money anyway. It's fee of money, exactly. Yeah. So I think in the worst case scenario, they might just go, you know what, Pfft, we tried, but yeah. damn, they're a bit too smart for us. Um, because they still own everything. Mm. But... It's not just about ownership, it's about power. Mm. And uh, they may try, they may try mm. a military option, but somehow I don't think that that is going to... Well, the uh, training is going on between the police forces where they're swapping... Yes, they are looking to create the EU yeah. police force. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think they really want total, total social meltdown. Yeah. So I think that there might be an attempt to recover the situation in the longer term. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, the bottom line is it has to be tried. Mm. Okay, Iceland, it's worked, it's working well. Mm. It's a great model. And uh, like you said, Bhutan stepped in to effectively say, guys, you know, look, the IMF tried to screw us. Yeah. Um, we know what they're capable exactly. of. You know, we're not prepared to help you out. Now, Iceland's debt was four billion, which mm. to Bhutan was, you yeah. know, chump change. Um, Ireland's is a little bigger. Yeah. But nonetheless, mm. um, if Ireland sets the wheels in motion to say, guys, you know, we're actually going to go the whole hog, we're going to pull out the EU, we're going to default on the, uh, the debt, we're going to take control of our monetary supply, we're going to take control of our economy, mm. we're actually going to establish an Irish bank for the people, mm. on behalf of the people, for the people. The interest that um, any loans generate will go straight back into uh, the public coffers. Then. I think these guys will, um, you know, just go away and have a rethink and, and look at uh, how they can maybe cooperate. The something of interest for you, um, for Ian, um, we spoke to Tom Prendeville, he's an uh, investigative journalist, freelance journalist, and he found out that the Irish Central Bank still print the Irish punt on their mm. licence. So are, are they thinking that if the euro does go down, because we're all on the same bloody tightrope, yes that they need to have a backup plan. Ready. Ready. Oh, listen, I mean, you know, I don't take anything away from these guys. They are smart. They will have considered all this. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm sure they will have a stockpile of uh, punts ready to go out. Because if the euro does totally collapse, as it might, mm -hmm. then there's got to be uh, plan B in place ready to go. And absolutely, I mean, it would be remiss of them not to have a stockpile of punts. Because I, I did approach yeah, the bank about this, about what if the euro goes down, because it's happened in Botswana. 
where mm. you have trillion dollar notes and they're not worth anything and exactly. they're sweeping them off the floor. Um, so so that, that is a, uh, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. One That's final thing that I think is important to say on CAM before we close the interview. Yeah. We also have to look at the potential of the short term and the, in the short term there could be a lot of social unrest. Mm. Now, it is not for us to be participating in the riots on the, the streets. That's, you know, people yeah. need to let off steam and let their frustration out. So we may need to hunker down, shut their doors and, and hold up for maybe, you know, two, three, four months, whatever. Yeah. So I would actively encourage people to start thinking about the precautions that they can take to protect themselves and their family against perhaps the worst case scenario. Food as well? Absolutely, food. food and water. Yeah. Now, I'm not encouraging or advocating panic buying. There's no need for that. Okay. Do what I do. Every time you go to the store, you buy a few extra cans, mm -hmm. a few extra bottle of bottles of water. Now, I'm well aware of the BPA, you know, the bisphenol A that's in the cans, the water, you know, we can't have it always. In the plastic. Yeah. So, um, you know, but what we need to be able to do is say, okay, if the worst comes to worst and the social order completely breaks down, I could draw the curtains, bolt the doors, and, you know, we can survive here for three... It's not just food and water, it's loo rolls yeah, and matches and, you know, stuff. all the other essentials. I mean, just give it a bit of thought. Um, but, and the same, obviously, like I said, with people who have liquidity, you know, think about yeah. protecting the purchasing power of that. Look at the alternatives other than just stuffing it under the mattress or leaving it in the bank even. So, you know, um, it is important that people actually do spend a bit of time thinking about it, thinking about the... Uh, the, the worst case scenario. Yeah. It, it was wonderful to hear people on um, the Late Late Show last night talking about, you know, yeah, we know Ireland can come through, we know the, the fortitude of the people. Yeah. Um, and I believe that too. Yeah. I believe that humanity does have the inherent capability to pull itself up by its bootstraps and it does respond incredibly well to crisis. Yeah. But that said, we might just have to go deep into the doo-doo first. Uh, th I think too, to end on the saying that my brother and I used to say, it's better to have and not need it than need it and not have it. Exactly. Ian, thanks very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Pleasure.